In the rest of this chapter, we're going to talk about some of the library functions that are available to make your job easier while writing a C program. The first thing we're going to talk about is string functions. The multiple string functions that help you perform basic operations such as copying strings, concatenating two strings, comparing two strings, etc. But before we talk about these functions, the first question is why do we need special functions to perform these operations? We don't have special functions to copy an integer into another integer. So for strings, why do we need this? Let's see why. First, let's look at what happens when we have an integer. So let's say I say int a. Somewhere in memory, so let's say this is our memory. Just allocate four bytes, call it a. And if I say int a equal to 25, puts the number 25 here. Now, if I say int b equal to a, it allocates space for b and copies number 25 here. Now I can do anything I want to do with b. I can say b plus plus it makes this 26. This still remains 25 because a is not changing. Now let's see what happens with strings. We know that strings are nothing but character pointers. There's no such thing as a string data type. So when we declare cas star str equal to hello. What really happens is in memory, first we're going to allocate space for hello and a backslash zero. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So you need space for six bytes. And you're going to store hello and the final backslash zero. Now let's say this has a starting address 2004. Also for the variable str, now you need to allocate four bytes because str is a pointer. So for str you're going to allocate four bytes and str is a pointer is pointing to the address of the string. The starting address of the string is 2004. So str has 2004. So you declared a single string and this is what it looks like in memory. Now let's say I have another string, I say cas star str2 equal to str. This is also allowed. Now what happens? He's going to allocate space for str2. So let's say I allocate space here. 4 bytes because str2 is a pointer. This is str2. I say str2 equal to str. What is str? str is 2004. So I'm going to copy 2004. Now if you realize both str and str2 are pointing to the same string. I have not made a copy of the string. By saying str2 equal to str, I haven't made a copy of the string, but I've just copied the address. But in case of integers, if you noticed, we're making a copy of the number itself. So with simple equal to operations that are available or even things like less than, greater than, you're only going to compare. If I compare if str is less than str2, I'm comparing the addresses here. They're both actually equal. doesn't matter. But let's say I have two copies of the string and I want to compare the two of them. How do I compare? I can't check if str is equal to equal to str2 because all I'll be doing is comparing the addresses. But for all you know, str could be pointing to a different string str2 could be pointing to a different string and the contents in those addresses, the strings could actually be equal. You could actually have str2 pointing to hello2. So instead of saying str2 equal to str, I can say str2 equal to hello. What will happen in this case is you'll allocate again space for hello. You'll store hello here. And let's say this address is 5004. Let's store the number 5004 here. Now if I compare if str is equal to equal to str2, it'll be false because str is 2004, str2 is 5004. We're just going to compare the addresses. It'll say it's not equal. Whereas the strings are actually exactly the same. So to handle these kind of scenarios where you want to actually make a copy of the string or compare the strings themselves, you need special functions, which of course you can write. But C library already has these functions. You have to include something called string.h and you have a list of functions which help you perform 
these tasks. So here are a list of some of those functions. Here's something called strcat. It helps you concatenate two strings. So the string passed as src or source is concatenated to the end of the destination string. So similar to strcat, you have strncat. In that case, you pass a third argument called int n. What happens is n characters from the source string are concatenated to the end of the destination string. Now, if you want to compare two strings, like I mentioned, you pass the two strings to strcmp. That will return zero if both the strings are equal. If str1 is smaller than str2, then it will return a negative number. And if str1 is greater than str2, then it will return a positive number. Similar to strcmp, you have strncmp, which will compare only the first n characters. Then like I said, the equal to does not actually make a copy of the string. So if you want to make a copy of the string, you have strcpy, which copies the source string to the destination string. And similarly, you have strncpy, which copies just n characters from the source string to the destination string. And finally, this you've used, which is strlen, to find the length of the string, str. Then you have something called strchr, which basically searches for the character c, in your string c in your string str and returns a pointer to the first occurrence of the character c in str similarly you have str rchr which does the reverse search which means it searches for this character c in your string str but it goes in the reverse order which means it will point to the last occurrence of the character c in the string str so these are various string functions that you have in string.h.